feel like um, it's up to, you know, female gamers to kind of, we can change that landscape. I mean, it might take a little while, but just in things like the games that you choose, like for instance, I really, really, really love Skyrim. And one of the reasons I love Skyrim is because there are lots of empowered women in it. You rarely find a woman in despair unless she like accidentally killed somebody and is asking for help from you. And you can customize a female character. She doesn't have massive boobs and a tiny waist and a really big butt and like, you know, speed skater thighs. Um, but I think that it's, it can be offensive. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, at the same time, let's just admit that there are plenty of male characters in these games also who are just very scantily clad, but they're just not as interesting to look at. Um, I have to, I have I to bring, I have to bring that up. And first of all, Nami, I'm so sorry. I'm pulling a, I'm pulling a Jacob sober off today. He's not here. I'm taking on the stutter and the kind of like name flub for him. Nami. It's such a beautiful name. I'm not going to forget it now. Um, you were, uh, just while we're on it, my name is Shannon Sun Higginson, not Sun Huffinson. Did I say, did we say Huffington at the beginning? I think so. Oh my god! But you got mine right. You know what? So you I'm just gonna. <laughs> bye, everyone. I'm just gonna go home now. I'll see, you, see you later. Just, I'm just sorry. sorry. Uh, no, no, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, thank you for thank you for correcting us. Um, but I, I have to. This is this is probably the funniest thing I've seen all day. Um, so we were just talking about Lara Croft and body image a little bit. This is um, this is a rendering of uh, of a male Lara Croft. This is Ulysses zero three zero two, um, who has put together this fantastic array of uh, what would be. Um, I suppose, I guess, that the aspects of, uh, of you know, this is, these are Lara Croft classic poses, but with a dude. And I wonder how this would go down. Uh, you know, Shannon, what do you think? Do we need to inject a little bit more of this flavor into the gaming world so that, um, you know, so that we can kind of take back a little bit or, you know, maybe readdress? I mean, I know we were joking a little bit, but maybe it needs to have some more balance. We need to get a little bit more balance injected into the gaming world and into the games themselves. Uh, you know, is it is it all about sort of putting a, a male like Tom Croft in what look like small spanks? Is that what it is? Is that, is that the only <laughs> oh, way forward well, now? Yeah, I don't know if the solution is necessarily over sexualizing men just so everybody is an object. Um, I think that maybe one of the problems is that, you know, um, like no Nami mentioned. Yeah. Right? Nami, yeah. <laughs> uh, like Nami mentioned, um, the, women are 45% of gamers, I believe now, but I think the industry itself is still pretty lopsided. And I think the more artists, designers, developers, writers uh, that people can encourage to be in the industry who are women and who are more diverse uh, will create more diverse characters. So, you know, more females, more people of color, just like different shapes of people. Um, I think that just because it, maybe it's a little bit too homogenous right now. People just sort of write what they know and they write for what they think is their audience. And I think that is sort of what causes this uh, disparity in like female versus male characters. And Lara Croft, you know, a lot of people look to her as a good representation. And some people say that, you know, there are obviously issues with her body image and stuff like that. But um, if there were more women, then we wouldn't always be talking about Lara Croft. And you know, I want to I want to just um, pause there for a second because Shannon, you've got some um, you've got some proper insight into this. You started a Kickstarter, and um, you 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 got funded. This is great for a documentary. Um, and I just want everybody to take a little look at a clip of the trailer from Shannon's upcoming documentary, GTFO. People are definitely surprised when I say that this is what I do for a living. And in the beginning, everybody thinks it's. Um, so cool, it's like the dream job. But I mean, you get a lot of criticism and kind of hate from people. I'm always, it's always the same. I'm, I'm always either fat and ugly or I'm a slut. Oh, well, everybody knows that girls who play Xbox are fat. That's just a fact. <laughs> or, you know, it's, it's a fact that all girls who play Xbox are hot. Like, okay, so these studies are conflicting. Maybe you should double check your data. So, I mean, the, one of the interesting things in, in researching when I was I found out we were doing the segment was that um, I didn't realize the number, the, the how high the stats are for female video gamers. And I hear that 45% of um, video game players are women. Um, and somebody noted earlier that includes things like Angry Birds as well. But they're still video games. So, you know, Shannon, like with that percentage, that high a demographic of female players, what did you find out in the course of your documentary? And what do you hope it's going to achieve in terms of like, you know, maybe pushing through some of these barriers that we've just been talking about? 
Um, well, something that I'm very concerned with is I, I don't want this film to discourage women from entering gaming at all. Um, I'm trying to provide a lot of sort of positive things that people can do, um, websites and resources, uh, gamer meetups that are for women, and sort of maybe more uh, women-friendly games that people can look to. Um, and then I think uh, another one of the things that I, I really want people to take away from this film is that even if you are a guy, if you hear, you know, one of your male friends saying something like it, it's not just women who have issues with these, like that have mothers and wives and daughters, and they should sort of think about that if other men are saying this stuff, because, you know, not that like women necessarily need saving or anything, but it, it would be good if the entire community sort of got behind the idea that sexism is bad, which seems like such a basic concept. Um, but it would just be great if there were, you know, sort of more allies. And then I think it's really important for a lot of women to sort of speak up about this as well when this happens to them. Yeah, Nami, what's your take on that? Well, you know, it's, it's really interesting because I've been gaming since probably the age of five, you know, with my brother. And it's, it's shocking to me because every single friend that I've made through gaming and everything like that, I've never ever felt threatened as a female. I was never, I never felt like I was being ganged up on or that there were rape jokes or anything. The fact of the matter is that you can choose who you game with, you know, and if you don't like something, you can walk away from it. And there are tons of other options. Um, so, and you know, like Shannon was saying about, I think the most important thing is for female gamers to focus on do it from the inside, you know, developers and artists and stuff like that, more females getting involved. I mean, of course, as gamers, you can choose games that don't over-sexualize women and stuff like that. And I think doing that together can really make a difference in the long run. And I mean, Crix, do you, do you kind of agree as well that this sort of video, video games aren't in isolation? That, you know, um, I've got a comment here from et cetera, et cetera. He said, it's a video game, movies, television, music, et cetera. It's like 10 times worse. Wow. Um, you know, is it, is it just all really an extension of kind of like a, a wider um, a wider world that we, that we operate within and that, that these cultural mores are just kind of really going on around us all the time? It's not just in this narrow field. Well, to respond to that guy's comment, uh, <laughs> team film, you can't talk back to it. So, you know, if you paid to go see that, then yeah, but you, you know, when that, whatever character says that line, it's not like you can talk back to it. Um, I think what we see here, I mean, from a journalistic standpoint, what, what the biggest problem we have sometimes lies with the PR companies because they, when they, especially when a company like mine that has a female centric title in it, they think, okay, well, she may not want to see this, this, or this, or this. And so, you know, Square Enix to their credit, um, they have tons of PR that handle different games. And so while I got invited to go see Saints Row 4, I also got invited to see the 15 Final Fantasy titles they had and not Thief or some of the more violent games. And not all girls play Final Fantasy. Um, but it's sucking it up and taking it. Yes, we have an increase in women, but then you have companies like GameStop, and I don't even know if this video exists anymore, but when it became evident that yes, we were a growing uh, demographic as far as purchasing video games, GameStop put out this employee video of how to deal with the female customer. Ugh. Because they thought it would be mostly mothers and girlfriends coming to buy games instead of actual females coming in to buy games for themselves. Which is, so, so, which is totally, I mean, we have to say it's totally kind of like anti what the statistics say. Um, you know, the EA kind of did this uh, study um, about this and, you know, it shows that even in a younger demographic, women seem to be the players. They're not the buyers. They're the game players. Um, you know, even when you, you just assume it's going to be a younger brother in his underpants playing FIFA or something. But it's not. It's, um, it's actually, you know, kind of more likely to be younger women or women under the age of sort of like 24 that are playing these games. Um, I really want to ask you very quickly because we're, we're kind of heading towards a well, wrap. Well, actually, to, to correct you really quick. Oh, um, no, go for it. Yeah, please. Really quickly. It's the ESA, the Entertainment Software Association. And actually, the age range of, of female, game, uh, female buyers is actually up to 35. That We're seeing more and more females coming in. And that's why we have sites like Geezer Gamer or Mary Gamers or Mommy Gamers 
So it's not just the young girls. Like I'm, I'm over 30 as well. I'm not going to tell you exactly my age, but <laughs> you know, there are more women like me out there that are like, yo, where's COD? Yo, where's Halo? Yo, where's <laughs> yes. this? Yo, where's that? And it, that, that point just needs to be made clear. And I, I absolutely encourage people to join the Entertainment Software Association because um, just the other day, Reverend Graham was saying on John Stossel on Fox Business how we're the bane of everything that goes on as far as violence in video games. And that's not true. And that's where, and he's like, there's no studies. And I'm like, no, there are studies. And they are concentrating more on the female side as well. And so I encourage any, any gamer or any journalist to go over there and look at this stuff. Yeah, Nami, I want to give you the, the final point because you were agreeing vociferously just then. So, uh, you know, what's, what is the takeaway? What's the future kind of for people like you, um, you know, that, that do game and are kind of in this world? Like, are you just going to, you know, do you, do you kind of join the ESA? Is this the way to kind of make your voice heard if you feel there are any discrepancies or disparities? Um, I, I definitely think, you know, now with like technology and the Internet and blogs and all this kind of stuff, we can be heard a lot louder let's say um so i think that's that's one way to do it shannon like with the kickstarter and the docu documentary like fantastic move can't wait to see it um <laughs> thank you but you know it's just like continue to get involved i think and this is going to sound really weird but i feel like in the gaming industry a lot of it has to do with like fear and mm -hmm. it's like any other thing where male, female, young, old, experienced gamer smells fear in the new gamer. And it doesn't matter if you're a girl or a boy, they will eat you alive. Yes. So it's more about just play, get good, show them what you got. And then it doesn't matter, you know, you don't, at the same time, you don't want to categorize yourself male and female. You want to just categorize yourself as a gamer. Yes. I like it. Here, here. We're all giving you a round of applause for that one. Show them what you got. I like that. That's nice. That's, that's a good thing. Hey, listen, Nami, <laughs> Crix, and Shannon, thank you so much for joining me today. This was really fun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks, guys, for uh, watching, commenting, tweeting, Facebooking. Please keep them coming. As you know, the conversation continues here up next on HuffPost Live.